good evening all welcome to this uh, session of radiology spotters which are very useful for exam going students as most of the st students will be facing their practical exams in the coming months i thought this radiology spotters spotter session will be useful so i will pause the slide uh, for few seconds uh, and i will show the spotters for few seconds in the start of the lecture you can pause the slide and see the spotters and the write the answers and then check the answers in my discussion session this is the first spotter this is the second one third fourth one you have to identify the structures in the skull and write their significance fifth one sixth one seventh one eighth ninth tenth one you have to identify the device and where it is used so we'll go to the answers we'll go to the discussion and so coming to the first first spotter you can see there is complete separation of the midfoot from the hind foot and there is a dislocation of the joint between the thallus and the navicular and the uh, calcaneum and the cuboid so this is called as chopper dislocation chopper dislocation is the dislocation where there will be complete dislocation of the midfoot from the hind foot and uh, their commonly fractured bones are the calcaneus cuboid and navicular so whenever you see complete dislocation of the midfoot from the hind foot definitely suspect Chopard's dislocation next second case this is nothing but a ring vaginal pessary most of the people thought this may be a foreign body this is called as ring vaginal pessary commonly used for pelvic organ prolapse this is how the ring vaginal pessary is seen on ct and there are different type of support pessaries for uh, pelvic organ prolapse for the first second degree and third degrees so there may be ring pessary gaharang pessary hodge pessary and cube pessary there is donut pessary and gel horn pessaries so these are different types of pessaries so whenever you see a well-defined ring like structure noted in the pelvis uh, one of the dd will be ring vaginal pessary for pelvic organ prolapse next third one you can see there is a dilated tubular structure noted in the retrocardiac location so whenever you see a dilated tubular structure noted in the retrocardiac location and the uh, whenever this tubular structure is continuous with that of the esophagus and in below it will be continuous with that of the gastrophage junction and stomach and sometimes there will can be multiple air foci or mortal foci uh, suggestive of food residue or sometimes there will be fluid levels so this is nothing but echalacia cardia and on barium studies you can see this is the echalacia cardia with narrowing at the distal one of the esophagus or gastroesophageal junction which is called as bird beak appearance and clearly on ct you can see this is the dilated esophagus with food residue and fluid levels so suspect this is a case of echalacia cardia next these are nothing but two joint bilateral joint parietal foramina so whenever you see lucencies symmetrical lucencies in the parafalcin location in the high parietal bones definitely suspect bilateral joint parietal foramina so this is this is the ct coronal coronal bone window you can see these are the bilateral joint parietal foramina and vrt sections these are the bilateral joint parietal foramina so joint parietal foramina are congenital calvarial defect resulting from delayed or incomplete ossification of the parietal bone these are commonly associated with cortical venous anomalies and this is also associated with Potoczki-Schaffer syndrome. 
next next case this is nothing but you can see there is complete absence of the sacrum below the level of s2 so there is complete absence of the sacrum below the level of s2 thecal sac is seen terminating at the level of and thecal sac is seen terminating at the level of s1 level and the conus medullaris is nothing but commonly terminates at mid portion of l1 vertebral level which is truncated and nothing but mimics the cigar shaped so truncated conus medullaris mimicking the cigar shaped is classically seen in case of caudal regression syndrome so whenever the complete absence of the bone below the level of S2, thecal sac terminates at S1 and the conus medullaris terminates at mid portion of L1 and mimic cigar shape, definitely suspect conus caudal regression syndrome. Next, uh, this was a case of endometrial polyp. You can see this is the endometrial polyp I have shown in the spotter. So and also this is the feeding vessel or pedicillatory sign or feeding vessel sign which is uh, classical for endometrial polyps. But three signs, other signs you have to remember for endometrial polyp is this is known as interrupted mucosa sign where the polyps interrupts the normal mucosal pattern in the uterine cavity. So this is the polyp and this is the interrupted mucosa. And sometimes you can see bright edge sign where you can see two two bright uh, echogenic uh, linear echoes at the level of poly, poly borders which are perpendicular to the ultrasound beam this is nothing but bright edge sign and this is the pedicillatory sign or feeding vessel sign which is classically seen in endometrial polyp which is seven which is uh, 76 percent sensitive and 95 percent specific for endometrial polyps next here this is a case of uh, you can see this is a hyper t1 hyperintense areas t2 hyperintense areas in the uh, right automaster air cells and also the, there is subtle areas of blooming on GRE but classically is DWA so DWA whenever you see restricted diffusion DWA in the middle ear or in the automaster area definitely suspect cholestatoma so DWA is a key sequence in diagnosing cholestatoma and helps in differentiating automasteritis from cholestatoma so whenever you see hyper in the automaster area and if you are not able to differentiate between the automasteritis and the cholestatoma definitely say, take the help of diffusion weighted imaging which is a key sequence in diagnosing cholestatoma and differentiating automasteritis from cholestatoma next here you can see there is a well defined cystic multi septated multi cystic lesion with multiple septae and this is arising from the kidney and clearly you can see the class sign these en septa are enhancing and this cystic lesion is seen herniating into the renal collecting system so this is a classical case of multilocular cystic nephroma the close differential will be multilocular cystic renal neoplasm of low grade potential which was previously called as multilocular cystic renal cell carcinoma so this is a case of multilocular cystic nephroma next this one is a case of leaf 4 2 fracture where you can see the fracture there is oblique fracture extending through the zygomatic maxillary suture through the inferior orbital rim and through the nasal bridge so this is a pyramidal type of fracture where the base is formed through the through towards the maxillar palate and the apex is towards the nasal bridge others are type 1 fracture type 3 fractures so all the three fractures involve the pterygoid plates and also the mnemonic will be leaf 41 is a floating palate leaf 42 is a floating maxilla leaf 43 is a floating face where there will be complete craniofacial dis dis separation last one here you can see this is a beam restrictor this is nothing but a cylinder these are the cylinder and the cone so these are the different type of beam restrictors this is aperture diaphragm this is cone this is cylinder so the beam, beam restrictors helps in restricting the size and shape of the x-ray beam thank you all we'll try to see some interesting spotters in the coming sessions thank you all